Shalom to the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And welcome back to another episode of Torah Tuesdays. And um, today's topic, we're going to get into uh, the dietary laws dealing with food. Um, we want to do a little recap as well, because I've been dealing with the uncleanliness uh, of certain things that the law speaks of. You know, certain things that the Most High uh, ordained, okay, ordained the children of Israel to follow certain laws um, dealing with clean and uncleanness, okay? And that goes to, it goes with, um, if you're dealing with, uh, you know, uncleanness of man, the uncleanness of a woman, uh, the, uh, the uncleanness of carcasses and how to deal with, you know, uh, carcasses dead or alive. You know, dealing with bodies, you know, whether it's animals or even humans, um, how to deal with the blood. OK, see, the most I, you know, when you start reading the laws, especially when it comes down to instructions, you know, he's, he's he gave the children of Israel instructions on everything. All right. Make no mistake about it. And they are <clears throat> in and structured within the commandments of the most high God. It's instructed in the 613 laws that he's gave that he gave us, which consist of the first uh, five books of the Bible. Now, that being said, it's very important because after captivity, one captivity after another captivity, you know, we lose the the information, the knowledge of these things, of how to conduct ourselves the way the Heavenly Father wants us to, and it's a given, you know. Uh, I didn't know of a lot of things when I was growing up. Uh, my parents, my grandparents, they didn't know. You know, I'm quite sure that they were dealing with unlawful things. So, you know, we have to always have the power back, you know, to to this law, statutes, and commandments so that we can have understanding. Give me one minute. Bye bye. So, you know, it's understandable, you know, it's understandable that we don't know these things. And this is the reason why the Heavenly Father has sent out, you know, teachers to inform, you know, the children of Israel of what they don't know. So as we get into uh, the dietary law, dealing with foods, which is lawful to eat and which is unlawful to eat, you know, you really have to do a lot of uh, research. Um, I did some, not all the way, because I really wanted to find out, you know, the the the, the makeup of certain unclean animals, um, uh, the biological way of how they are that can harm us. Okay, like the pig, you know, famous pig. So dealing with the pig, you know, you have a lot of people that say, well, you know, I've been eating pork all my life. I've been, though, you know, they say they claim they gave the pork to you know, our ancestors, our forefathers who were slaves, which I've done some research on that. And basically they did not give our ancestors, our forefathers, a lot of meat. Okay. And you can do the research yourself, but they didn't give our forefathers a lot of meat. They gave us a lot of grains. They gave us a lot of porridge, you know, because that sustained us for all of the hard work that we was doing in the fields. So check on that because I've read several books where meat was a delicacy and it was only given during the times of they quote unquote folly days that they would give our forefathers who were slaves meat, right? And then when they did give it to us, they gave us the bad parts of the meat. You know, our forefathers didn't sit back eating, you know, ham, you know what I'm saying? All the time. It was only on certain occasions that they would receive, you know, portions of meat like that. Okay, so keep that in mind and do a little research on it. I, I'll, I'll see if I can bring up a couple of books that I was reading about that and how they was handling us. Because remember, they was handling us like, like herd, you know, like animals. You know, they want to give a feed uh, us what was considered healthy that would keep us healthy and keep us in those fields. So with that being said, 
let's jump right into the dietary laws. I want to start off in Leviticus first. I'm sorry, in Genesis. I want to go to Genesis because I want to make a point on all those people who say that they've been eating shrimps, lobsters, pork, uh, you know, all these abominations that is actually listed in the Bible all their lives and ain't nothing happened to them. You know, nothing had came. Well, I'm, I'm healthy as ever. Maybe, it may be the case. But if there are laws saying that they are unclean and don't eat them, then that's the judgment that you have to face once you are done with this life. You know, once you stand before the, the judgment seat of the Most High, you want to ask him, and you have to answer for that, put it that way. You're going to have to answer that. But to make this dietary law, uh, I would say, uh, more understandable that it's been here since the Most High blessed our forefathers. I'm going to start in Genesis. All right. One minute. One minute, Let's share the screen. Okay. All right, let's go back. Go back to Genesis, Genesis chapter two and verse seven. Now I'm going to Genesis because we know, uh, well, I'll read seven and one, so we'll know who we're talking about, all right? So it says, and the Lord said unto, Mo unto Noah, come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteousness, be have I seen righteous before me in this generation. So we're talking about Noah. Okay, so now we're talking about during the flood time. And then during the flood time, he gave Noah instructions on how to build the ark. He also gave Noah instructions on uh, the animals that were supposed to be on the ark, as well as his family as well. So instructions, laws was given to Noah during the time of the flood. Verse 2. Of every clean beast. Now statement a clean beast meaning a clean animal meaning lawful animal thou shalt take to thee by sevens the male and the female now why is that it's because of product uh, of reproduction okay you have the male and the female now we're going to get a little bit more into that as well and the beasts that are not clean by twos, the male and the female. Keep that in mind. Now we're talking about the flood. Okay, so I'm going to skip down to verse 8. Verse 8, of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean and of fowls and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. When thou there went in to and to unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. Now, why were there seven? Let's go back up. He said to bring him in the clean beast by seven, seven males, seven females. Okay. It's because number one, they had to be eaten. They had to be eaten. They had to be sacrifices that was, that, that has to be uh, given, right? Because as you continue to read Genesis, when Noah came off the ark, uh, um, Noah had built uh, uh, a temple, right? And he gave a sacrifice to the Most High God for saving him, him and his family, when you read on, right? So now, that's the reason why he had them to bring seven, seven clean, clean animals, male and female. Okay, now let's get that in the book of Numbers. I'm sorry. Before we go there, to let you know that 
the laws was, was in effect during the time of Noah, they also was in effect during the time of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. So let's go there. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Uh, I think it's Genesis chapter one. Okay, let's get Genesis chapter one, All right? So now, like I said, these laws, these dietary laws, these sacrificial laws was in effect all the way during the time of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, and Noah. Okay, this is how we know that our forefathers passed down the laws to the children, to his, to their children, right? And that's how we hold and possess these laws right now today. So knowing that and understanding the dietary laws is very crucial within our lives because it's been passed down throughout annals of generation throughout the Hebrew Israelites uh, nation. So we should take this very seriously along with a lot of other benefits that come out of uh, uh, rehearsing and doing the dietary laws throughout all of our um, generations, period. Let's make, let's make that, okay? So um, I'm gonna read Genesis chapter four and verse one. And Adam and Eve, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bared his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. And, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, I'm sorry, <clears throat> and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Verse four, and Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock of the fat thereof and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So now it says he brought the firstling of the flock. Keep that in mind. Now you can get into uh, another, uh, you can get into another uh, uh, lesson dealing with the, um, the, the accepting of the offer, uh, the offering, you know, you can get into that, but it's, it's clearly gonna clear that up in a minute. So, Abel gave the firstling of the flock. Cain gave the fruit of the ground. Okay, let's read on. Verse five. But unto Cain <clears throat> and to his offering, he had no respect. He had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So now you can continue on. But Abel gave the firstling of his flock, meaning Abel knew and Cain knew of the sacrificial uh, laws, period, okay? So let's go into numbers. Let's, let's confirm that. Let's go into numbers chapter 18. And I think I want 17. Okay. Now keep in mind, remember, Abel gave the firstling of his flock. So Numbers chapter 18 and verse 17. But the firstling of a cow or the firstling of a sheep or the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar, right? Upon the altar and shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire for a sweet savior unto the Lord. See, you have to go back and read that because they knew the sacrificial laws, Adam, me, uh, Cain and Abel. But Abel gave the first one of his flock. Now you're gonna tell me that Cain did not have any flock or any of his you know, uh, personal uh, animals that he herded, he did because that's what, that's what was done back in those days. You don't think that uh, Abel had a garden? I'm quite sure he did. He had both. Both of them had both. They had a garden 
as well as a flock. See, that, 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 that's the key thing to dealing with the law. But anyway, the Most High required what the firstling of your herds. It says of a cow, of a sheep, the firstling of a goat, right? And they made an altar and they did a sacrifice. So I want to bring that out because <clears throat> it's dealing with the dietary laws. It's dealing with clean animals and unclean animals. You understand? So even Cain, I bet you even Cain himself knew he couldn't bring uh, a pig and, and sacrifice uh, a burnt offering for a pig. I'm quite sure he knew that, you know. But that's the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make that that, that was a sacrificial law during the time of Cain and Abel, as well as during the time of Noah, because Noah pointed out that there should be seven uh, clean females or clean males and then seven uh, clean females. So the dietary law was already set in effect right there. So now with that being said, let's go over and let's get into Leviticus. Let's get into Leviticus uh, chapter 11. Let's get into Leviticus. Uh, let's go one. <clears throat> Leviticus chapter Okay, let's get into Leviticus chapter 1 and 11. So now, back into dealing with the food, right? Um, you know, once again, uh, this is going to be a two-part. Hopefully it won't be a three. But right now I'm just going to deal with the beast Right, and I'm going to deal with the fish. So, um, and then the fowls and the creepy things is going to be a part two. All right. So, <clears throat> Leviticus chapter eleven, verse one. So we all know who we who the Most High is talking to. It says, "And the Lord spoke unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat." among all the beasts that are on the earth. Okay, so now we got we got to clear all the beasts that's upon the earth. Then the Most High is going to go into it. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven-footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that ye shall eat. All right, so real quick, let's see if we can pull up some images. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. No, I should have had it ready. Steady trying to give me, trying to give me YouTube. I don't want YouTube. I don't know why I was trying to give me YouTube. Okay. I see what I'm doing wrong. Bear with me. Bear with me. All right. Um, I'm just going to put in. Uh, put in this real quick and see what comes up. We just want some images. So it says, the split at the hoof. And like I said, they have plenty of, um, this is a good one, I believe. They have plenty of um, examples, you know, when you're dealing with the dietary laws. Uh, so I'm going to read um, first, verse 3 again. So it says, Whatsoever part of the hoof and is clovered footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that ye shall eat. So let's go with the clean animals. I'm sorry, let's go with the clean animals. We're gonna get to the good lord. <laughs> the 
Bear with me. Good Lord, he's giving me all kinds of crap. <laughs> uh, don't give me that. I don't want that. I just want like animals, okay? Mm. Let's try it again. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. So it's going to give me the clean and the unclean. But let's look at some of the animals that actually part of the hoof, right? Here we go. Okay. All right. So this is what the most high is saying uh, a clean animal in the Torah, okay? So now it means part of the hoof, meaning that it has to have not a full hoof, but it has to have a cut in the hoof, right? And it has to chew the cud. So with that being said, I have a list of clean, of clean animals, right? Here's a nice little list of the clean animals, right? And it's got like the um, antelope. Uh, the buffalo, the deer. Let's bring up a few of those. Let's bring up the antelope. That's a good one. That's a good one right there. Let's bring up the antelope. Let's bring up the antelope. Let's see what the antelope brings up. Okay, so if we bring up the antelope. Hopefully, I can get. Um, we know that that antelope chewed the cud, right? It chews grass and um, weed and things like that, just like the goat, as well. Um, let's see if we can get the feet of them. But the hoof on it, it splits. Let's see if I put hoof. Here we are. Here's the antelope. Good picture right here for the antelope. See, it's split the cup, uh, the hoof, as well as it chews the cud. Right? And any and any other uh, that's within that family, because when you look under there, it says the buffalo, the deer, that's part of the elk. All right. Uh, this one they said it says um not eaten due to um, being a protected species. I haven't looked up that one, but then the goat, then the moose. Uh, this is a, this is interesting, the caribou, all right? The caribou is actually lawful. And we know that, you know, our indigenous uh, sisters and brothers is part of their diet. Let's bring up the caribou. Now, it's bringing up, this is not the caribou though. Uh, let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, let's go back. Uh, I missed the eye. Okay, here's the caribou, as we can see, right? And here's the hoof of a caribou. So actually, this is a lawful animal that we can eat, but you can tell that it's part of the deer family as well, right? Part of the deer family, part of um, of the uh, of the cow. Well, not really the cow because it's part of the elf family, 
you got the deer, you got the elf, you got the uh, the goat, you have the moose, you know. Let's bring up moose. Let's see what the moose. That's the caribou. Let's bring up the moose. Okay, here's one of the mooses right here. You know, still got the, the horns, but there's the foot of a moose. All right, here's a, here's a foot of, of the moose right here. See, split the hook. Okay, even though it's a, that's a huge animal, you know, very huge animal, but it's still lawful though. Okay, it chews the cud as well. Okay. So let's go back here, right? So uh, we know the buffalo, you know, that's a huge animal as well, but it also um, splits the hoof and it, and it chews the cud. So going back, right, going back to Leviticus 11 and three, it says, <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna read two. It says, speak unto the children of Israel saying, uh, these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are upon the earth. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is clothed footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that ye shall eat. Okay. Then it says, nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that cheweth the cud or of them that divided the hoof as the camel because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. So let's bring up the camel. Okay. Let's bring up the camel. Uh, let's bring up the camel and let's bring up another one of these. Here we are. Here's the camel. Now it says, yes, he split the hoof, right? It says, nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that cheweth the cud, or them that divided the hoof as the camel. So even though the, the camel divided the hoof, okay, but it, it specifically named the camel, right? Given an example. That cheweth the cud because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. Right. So now this hoof is not really, you can see a split in it, but when you look on the bottom, it's full. Here's an example right here. See, it's full. Now, it may be some exceptions as far as like certain animals, they had defects. Here's another one. Okay. Here's another one that's dealing with the hoof. Okay, it's split, but it's still solid, just like that. All right. But like I said, you can look these things up. You know, just like as I looked them up, you can look them up as well. And then, you know, who wants to eat camel anyway? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I understand that we've been in this captivity here in America, and this, you know, our diet is different from. Let's say somebody that's over in the Middle East, you know, we still have sisters and brothers over there as well. But, you know, uh, I think I have brought out is dealing with their caucuses and they had a, I mean, an example of the camel. They actually have camel meat that they eat over. There, OK, so dealing with the dietary law, the Heavenly Father is telling us, listen. Oh, shit. Ooh, I got to go back and get that. It's telling us, listen. Don't deal with, you know, certain kinds of animals, right? Right, don't deal with certain kind of animals. Um, okay, sorry about that. Back to that. 
fall in love. That's okay. Yeah, don't deal with certain kind of animals, right? Um, that are unlawful that that he mentions, and their and the and the, the animals of their family. You know, we're not supposed to eat nor touch their carcasses. Okay, meaning their body, their dead bodies. So let's go back to Leviticus and let's read a little bit more. Because remember now, <clears throat> it's it's just here for us to read so that we can do our own research. Find out what's lawful to eat, what's not lawful to eat, okay? And on Torah Tuesday, that's what I'm doing. I'm just reading the law, just giving some examples. But now it, it's, uh, it's up to us, our due diligence, to go back and to actually look, right, and inform oneself and educate oneself and start to look up a lot of other of these animals, which the name has changed over the years, you know? Like, for instance, they... The Bible is going to mention the swine, right? But then the name changed to a pig, right? So it's things like that, that over time, names change with certain animals. But we have technology at our fingertips and we can go in and look and, and find out, especially when you're dealing with fish, okay? Which is, most times make that even simpler too. You know, we're going to get into that later on. But <clears throat> back into Leviticus, uh, and I left off at, uh, I'm going to read verse 6. Actually, I'm going to read verse 5. Actually, no, I'm sorry. i got to go back up to 4. Nevertheless, these shall you eat. <clears throat> you shall not eat of them that cheweth the cud, or them that divideth the hook, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, which he does. Now, chewing the cud is a perfect example. If you look at everybody's seen camels on TV, blah, blah, blah. They constantly chewing, constantly chewing, like the cow. The cow is constantly chewing, chewing and cutting. Why? It's because <clears throat> they have two stomachs. You know, they swallow it and then they bring it back up and then they chew it some more. Okay. So keep that in mind. It says, because he chewed the cud, divided the hoof, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you, verse 5. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean to you. So now let's deal with the coney. Let's look up the coney. Let's look up the coney. And the coney, we're going to find out right now. Uh, what it is. I better put in animal. If not, it's going to give me something else. And it did. <laughs> it did. Well, the coney is this another one too. Is is this dealing with a certain family? But the coney is dealing with a rabbit. Okay, let me make sure I got that right. Because if you put in the coney, this is like dealing with some type of um the, the rabbit family, the the mouse family. Here it is, right here. There we go. It looks a little different, right? They give you an understanding of what the coney is. I believe the coney is a little bit bigger than a rabbit, right? And it looks more like this. Okay. We got brown rabbits, white rabbits, but it's still within the rabbit family. Okay. But that's a coney. I don't know what this is. Here's another one right here. Right. So it's in the, it's in the rabbit family, right? The most high says that we are not to eat that because it said it's true with the cud said verse five and the coney because it true with the cud but divided not the hoof he is unclean to you so let's go back and let's see what the coney hoof looks like all right so here we are let's get a better one in this 
So we know the rabbit does chew at the cud because it's another animal. It just sits there and it just chews and chews and chews. Uh, but also, we know that a lot of people eat rabbit. You know, a lot of people eat rabbits. Uh, rabbit soup, rabbit stew, whatever they make out of the rabbit. But we know a lot of our um, our people, a lot of people eat rabbit. But let's go back up. Here it is here. Okay, this is more of a uh, of a rabbit's foot, right? How a rabbit is. Now it chews the cud. We know it chews the cud. Ah, you messed up. Sorry about that. But I'm typing. Okay. Just looking up some things, you know, within that family. That's going way off. All right, let's go back to Leviticus. So it says, um, verse six, <clears throat> the hair, right? It says, and the hair, because he chewed the cud and divided not the hoof, he is unclean. So let's look at the hair, right? Another animal that's part of the rabbit family. Right? Here we are. Now the hair looks definitely more like a rabbit, but the other ones look more like a squirrel. But regardless of the fact, the most I said is unclean, right? So if you look at that, more look like the, the wild rabbits, uh, the hares. Here's different of the different families, right? Here's different families of the, the rabbit the hare, and the coney. And like I said, over time, we know that the names have changed from them, but they still run in the same family, okay? But the Heavenly Father said that they are unclean unto us, all right? Um, verse 7, and the swine, though he divided the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. So now let's get into the swine. All right, let's get into the swine. Now, that's, this is perfect. This one here is perfect. This gives you a whole outlook of the whole family of the swine family, okay, the pig family. And I wish I could bring this up, but anyway, we can understand the structure of it. And that gives you a whole breakdown of them. Let's look at this one. If we will, won't let you do this. Let's see if I can bring it up. There we go. Now here's a whole variety of the pig or the swine family. Wild hogs. I mean, you got you got them all. The all of the unclean beasts. Here's the, the warthog right here. 
You got different kinds of wood hogs. You got a regular hog that's actually dealing with, uh, it could be small, they could be large. Let's see if I can bring it in. You know, but you know, you get the idea. You get the idea. Uh, you got the boar. Yes, right. The boar is part of this, the pig family. So just like I pulled this up and read the scriptures, you can do the same thing, right? Let's not be ignorant of the Most High's, um, you know, word. So you can bring it up. Okay, verse seven, it says, and the swine, though he divided the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he choose he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean. Verse 8. Of their flesh ye shall not eat, and their caucuses ye shall not touch. They are unclean unto you. All right. Like I said before, uh, I went over, you know, uh, uncleanliness of carcasses, you know, all carcasses, whether it's clean or unclean, the Most High has a specific way he wants us to handle, you know, carcasses of animals as well as uh, the carcass of humans, right? And there's certain things that the Heavenly Father tells us to do. He says to wash your hands, to wash your clothes and be unclean, you know, until even. So you can go back and watch that or, you know, finish researching yourself because it's clearly there all throughout the uncleanness laws, okay? And the clean laws, all right? So um, it says all of their, all of their flesh, ye shall not eat, and their caucuses ye shall not touch. They are unclean unto you. So when you're dealing with that, and this says all the beasts of the field. So let's go back. Let me see if I can bring back, um, I want to bring back this, um, I don't think I can do it. Man, I messed up. See if I can bring this back up and just have it um, pick up another one. See if I can bring it up. There it is. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yes, there we go. So as we scroll down, let's go back to um, unclean meats, right? And the clean meats. So let's deal with the unclean as it goes down. So it's going to name a few, right? It's going to name a few. It's going to name, you know, the pig, of course, the monkey, the bear, the lion, the tiger, the leopard, the camel, the horse, the alligator. Now, another thing, okay? So now it has alligator in there, but it just said unclean meats, right? We know that that's an animal that's in the water, but um, I think it's on swamp people, you know, they catch the alligators and bring them in and sells them, but they also eat the alligator. And there was one episode that I seen where they had uh, cut up the alligator and the meat, I guess the muscles in the meat was actually, you know, triggering and it was moving, you know. Uh, and then once they put the meat on the grill, it started to move even fat. It started moving even faster, you know, because it was triggering the muscle 
uh, I guess, within the meat, and it just was constantly moving, you know, constantly moving. You know, that that was kind of interesting, you know, to see that uh, that type of meat moving on a grill. Okay, put it that way. So the alligator, the kangaroo, you know, unlawful to eat. Just dealing with the unclean meats, right? Now the kangaroo, it also walks on. It has a it has a um, a split in the hoof, but we don't eat kangaroo meat. You know, people in other regions that have kangaroos, they may eat the meat, but still in all, the most I said is unlawful. All right, uh, check this out: the possum, you know, the squirrel, you know, possum and squirrel. You know, you know a lot of people back in the south they eat possum, they eat squirrel. You know, the donkey, the mule, okay, uh, the mouse and the rat. You know, over in the Philippines, they got a certain kind of, um, I don't know what they call it, some kind of field rat or something like that. Uh, but it's it, it lives in the field and it eats, you know, the vegetables, things like that, but it's still a rat, okay? They go out, they hunt them, they, you know, slice them up and barbecue them, but you know, most high sin, that's an unclean animal, okay? <clears throat> the dog and the cat. You know, we've seen um, videos with the Asians, you know, they seen one of them was horrible. They boiled some hot water and put the dog in there and the dog laying there just howling. You know, all of these things the most high said is unlawful to eat, okay? Very unlawful to eat. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more, right? And we're going to continue to read because now we're going to get into the fish. Okay. Uh, we're going to start at verse 9. Actually, let's go back up. I'm going to go back to verse 8. <clears throat> Leviticus chapter 11, verse 8. Of their flesh ye shall not eat, and their carcasses ye shall not touch. They are unclean unto you. These are, these shall, these shall be, these shall eat, ye shall eat, I'm sorry, these shall ye eat of all that is in the waters. I'm sorry about that. Uh, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the water, in the seas, in the rivers, them ye shall eat. Now, once again, you have to go in and start to research, okay? But this is the key. Number one, it says, uh, in the waters. So the next scripture is going to tell you and give a specific about, we're talking about the ocean, we're talking about the rivers, you know, anywhere where water is circulating, right? Uh, the animals that are in that water it says right here, whatsoever have fins and scales, fins and scales, in the waters, in the sea, in the rivers, them ye shall eat. So let's go back over to the list again. Let's go back over to that list. And let's deal with the, um, I mean, it has a whole list whole list of certain seafoods, right? Whole list, you know? And a lot of these fishes I brought up, let's see, I just want to bring up a couple of them. Uh, one of them that I didn't know, it's called, uh, uh, let me bring it up. Let me just bring it up. Okay. Bear with me now with this computer stuff. All right. Put this in. I'm gonna put this in, and maybe it'll come up. Um, okay, we got package. It's called the Pollock, right? So let's go back. And it's one of the fishes on there that I was like, what is that? That was lawful to eat. Um, 
Here it is. The Polak. They call it the Polak, right? I'm like, what is that? Right? So then I had I went back and I said, well, it's, it's find out what it is. And here it is. Right? It's a clean fish. It has fins. It has scales. And um, because the key, the key to dealing with seafood, it says whatsoever has fins and scales. Right? And it ends there, period. So I had to bring up another one. Right? I had to bring up this other uh, fish, which is... Um, can I bring it up? I think that's how you spell it. Barracuda fish. Oh shit! Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me go back with the correct spelling for it. I mean, it's a whole list of fishes, like you say, and it's good to go over them. You know, when you bring it up, it's good to go over it to find you know different kinds of fish because. Uh, there's a variety of them, which is which is good because that's that's what we want. We want to have an abundance of choices. Okay. Uh, actually, I think they put it as an unclean fish. I think they put it as an unclean fish, and I had to question that. Uh, where is it? There it is. There it is. They said it's an unclean fish. And I had this fish before. And it's known. It is, let me go back over. It's a barracuda. I'm going to make sure I got the correct spelling because it'll give me all kinds of stuff. There we go. Right. So now. On, y'all bear with me, on this list here of unclean, right, fishes, they have it right here, barracuda, right under the alligator, okay, uh, uh, the bullhead. I don't, I have to look up that, what the bullhead, but we know catfish, you know, clams, crocodile, crab, uh, uh, crepe, you know, that's like a crepe. Then they got uh, a crap. Then they, I don't know what that is, but then they got the uh, clayfish, the eel, okay, lobster, uh, the moonfish, mussels, octopus, you know, so on and so forth. But they had the barracuda on there, and I was like, nah, 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 because I know I had, I know I've had it, um, and that's a lawful fish, okay. This fish has skins and fell, and I've seen it up close. It's a very good, tasty fish as well. Um, but I've had this fish, and it, you can see it have the fins on top, and it's also a scaly fish. Now, also, it has big teeth, and it will attack you. Okay, when I was down in Belize, they were saying, be careful with this fish, because this fish is known to attack people, all right? Especially if you try, they were trying to catch him, because it's a delicacy down there in Belize. I mean, the long, how his body is, uh, as long you can actually cut this his body into steaks, you know, really nice, sort of like king kingfish, because kingfish you can cut into steaks, and um, some salmon as well you can cut, and it looks like a steak. But really good fish. I mean, a really good fish, not gamey at all, uh, but it's a very hard fish to catch because this fish <laughs> will attack you, and how they actually go about catching this fish is either with uh, a spear. You know, a lot of Belizeans, they go spear fishing, but this is one of the ones that uh, they literally go and spear fish with, and it grows pretty large. So um, this, this is a big fish, okay? And when they do catch them, they're happy because it goes for a healthy price as well. You know, if you catch a barracuda, you know, down there, I mean, that's that's big money. You know, it's a couple of thousand dollars for that for that fish. But let's go back to the list again. So, 
We're going to go back to Leviticus and read that. Let's go back. Because it's going to give you um, more understanding about fishes. I mean, about fishes, but uh, about uh, animals that lives in the, in the sea. <clears throat> verse, nine, verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the water, in the sea, in the rivers, them ye shall eat. And all that have no fins or scales in the seas, in the rivers, of all that moveth in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, ye shall, they shall be an abomination unto you. Now, that's when we start to get into the others. Let's go back to that list again, right? It says, all that moveth and lives in the sea that doesn't have fins and scale, it is an abomination unto you, right? So if you go back, like I said, you got lobsters, right? You got octopus. You see people eating lobsters, opt octopus. You know, you see them eating shrimps. Uh, you know, uh, I'm just going to pull it up. Let's just take a little visual about unclean seafood. Let's see what they say. See what they give us. Here we go. We got a whole smuggers boy right here. The whole smuggers boy. Bring it over a little bit. Oops. Okay, let's bring it over. If we can see. I mean, they got everything. I mean, they got the. I don't even know what that is. There's the lobsters, there's the pig as well. There's the oysters, okay? Lot, they big on oysters. Um, let's bring up some more dealing with seafoods. That's unlawful. Uh, I don't see how they eat the oysters. You know, that's just completely abominable. But the point is that, you know, it's, it's here for us to understand and for us to search out and find out you know what the heavenly father has set as clean and unclean you know shark i heard that people actually are eating shark now i, I don't i don't see it you know but you know whatever you know whales uh, catfish okay the catfish it has a it has fins but catfish we know the skin of it is slick it doesn't have any scales uh, you know of course crabs um you know as you can see right here, they're saying that, you know, a, a, a shrimp is considered as a, as a roach, you know, the scavenger of the sea. Okay. So let's go back to Leviticus. Right. And it says, and all that have no fins or scales in the seas and in the rivers and all that moveth in the waters and of any living thing, listen, it says, any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abominable unto you. Verse 11, they shall be even an, an abominable unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their caucuses an abomination. Okay. Now, it says, oh, well, let me read 12. Whosoever, whatsoever, have no fins or scales in the water, that shall be an abominable abomination unto you. So now, that should make it pretty clear, okay? We had some examples that we actually brought out. Um, That we actually brought out and we seen is it's nothing new. It's nothing new. I mean, the most I mean, it's cut and dry. You know, it's cut and dry right here. Uh, but you can find this in Leviticus chapter eleven. You know, for those who don't know, and like you say, once again, 
um, just like I pulled up this here, you know, this list of things. Uh, share my screen real quick. Just as I brought up, you know, that. This little list of things that you can actually go through and um, scale down, you know, if you like, you know, every, you do everything else on your phone, just start bringing up these names. So that way you can have a visual also of what these animals look like. And also that way you can also recognize, you know, the packages that um, that's on the food. Because a lot of times they have uh, artificial crab, um, artificial um, lobsters. You know, I don't know what that's all about. I don't know what they mean by that. Uh, is it grown in the farm? Or, or I, I have no idea because I don't mess with the stuff. And I don't see, you know, a lot of people, when we tell them about the dietary laws and things to eat, things not to eat, uh, they have a problem with it. You know, I, I, I don't get that. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's simple. I mean, you're not going to die, you know, if you don't eat lobsters or, 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 or conks. You know, that's another one, conks, because conks is like the, 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 um, the flesh that's in a seashell. OK, it's very popular throughout the Caribbean islands. Um, and, I, you know, I, I don't see a problem. I mean, if, if I know that I'm going to be judged by this. Right. And the Heavenly Father is going to judge me based upon a dietary law and I have to leave those things. I'm going to leave them alone. You know, I, I wish I could have went into just the 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 the, um, the DNA of them, of these animals, these unclean animals and how they have an effect on the body you know, without us even knowing it for those who eat, it, you know what I'm saying? Eventually it has to have some kind of effect because the heavenly father tells us not to mess with it, you know? So to know these things and to leave these certain foods alone, you know, I, I, I don't get it, you know, just leave it alone. That's it. You know, anybody else, the mother nations that they want to eat it, that's a delicacy to them. Like for instance, I brought up the, um, the, uh, the blood sausages, you know, I mean, no, no, no. It's one thing on here too that uh, I wanted to bring out as far as, un well, it's dealing with the fowls. I'm not gonna go there, that'll be for part two. But we gonna deal with the fowls, meaning the, 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 um, uh, the birds, or what's lawful, what's not lawful, okay? The birds, uh, as well as the creepy things, meaning the insects, but that's a big popular thing now, you know, with them wanting us to eat uh, insects uh, instead of eating meat. You know, they're turning insect burgers and all of this other stuff. I'm going to get a little bit more into that uh, when we get into that, the creepy things, because certain creepy things we can eat. It's lawful, but we get into that. But let's go back, you know, to the the beast and the seafood, right? And it, and, and it actually clears it up. I mean, it's very clear because it tells you you know, it tells you right here in verse 10, it says, and all that have not fins and scales in the seas. So now when it says that if it don't have fins and scales, let's just make it simple because over the years, people have made it, you know, really complicated when it don't have to be. It's just simple, right? Uh, it's soul fish. Is that a lawful um, to eat or not, um, a, group, a group, grouper, you know, is that lawful to eat? Um, it's another one that's out there. Uh, that's very popular. Uh, perch, you know, perch that that's was a, a, a very key out to eat. Even sardines. Look these things up. I did. And guess what? They're lawful. Sardines, the little sardines, they have, they have scales on them. You can eat the scales, but they, but it has scales on it. And it also has fins, right? Um, and like I said, you look these things up and it's very simple because it says uh, in the book of Leviticus, let me share my screen. That's why it's gotta be simplicity. Most I ain't making nothing difficult at all, at all. Here's verse 10. It says, and all that have not fins and scales in the sea and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters 
and of any living thing which is in the waters. They shall be an abomination unto you. Very simple. That's how if you want to know if what seafood that you're eating or what fish that you're eating, if it's lawful or not. You just go right back and read the simplicity of Leviticus chapter, I think there was 11 and 10. Okay. And that also goes with the beast, meaning the meat. We know that goat, lamb, cow. Now we know the antelope, bu um, uh, buffalo. You know, those are all lawful meats that we can eat. And then there's a, another variety of, of um, that was on the list as well. Okay. But very simple. Very simple. But like I said, to some people, it's hard. And I tell you this, um, you know, we're living in times where they say, you know, World War Three is going to jump off. And, you know, if you have this, this economy crashing and things like that, people are going to get hungry. And then people are going to be like, I don't care what it is. As long as it's food, I'm eating. See, and that's where we as Israelites don't have to kick in and have that faith of the most high. You know, um, that's when we really going to have to kick in and say, no, you know, they may be over there cooking some pig and you ain't eating three days. But that's all around. Bottom line, that's when faith is going to have to come in. You know, but knowing these commandments, knowing the dietary laws is also critical and crucial. But we will hold the fort. You know, we will hold our our faith in the Most High. That even though they over there eating pig and 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 um and eating whatever they you know unlawful things, you know, and we and then the Israelites are over here and having eaten, you know, the Most High is gonna come through for us. Bottom line. But now keep in mind, if that pig, if we have that pig in our possession, you know, we can sell that pig to the heathens. Keep that in mind. You know, but like I said, and um, if these things happen to uh, increase and we don't have the luxury of what we have now, grocery stores and things like that, you know, we really going to have to fall back upon these laws and commandments, you know, of the most high in order to get through these hard times of Jacob's troubles. So we definitely have to keep that in mind as well. So I'm going to leave it at that. And um, I'm going to do a part two and we're going to deal with the fowls, meaning the birds and the creepy things, you know, go into a little bit of more of that and bring out some examples as well as another list of things that could be eaten and things that cannot be eaten, okay? So with that, I say shalom.